All right, in this session, we are going to take our next step uh, with our studio. And uh, I've got it open here already. We've got our four window panes, and we're going to talk about matrices today, another object that R deals with that we're going to deal with, with this in this class. And so I'm going to go ahead and open uh, a little piece of code called rmatrix.r, which is a code that uh, you're going to have, but we can go ahead and follow along uh, in this video. So in our last video, we dealt with vectors. And uh, so what we're doing here in the beginning of this um, this video here is we're going to reintroduce two of the vectors that we were dealing with in the last uh, video, which were A1 and A2. Again, A1 is being assigned a vector using the combined function or the concatenate function of 1, 2, 5, point, 3, 6, minus 2, and 4. Um, and this is A2 doing the same thing with a set of different numbers. And so these are objects that are showing up in our global environment. We are then going to do something with them. So right now, uh, we remember that these things uh, had a specific length, A1, and they were just a string of numbers. Well, one thing you can do with two strings of numbers is you can combine them together. And one function to do that is something called C bind. And in and, and the notes here, we're going to create a matrix from what's called a column binding vectors. And the way to think about it is that you know each vector is like a like a like a slot in the fence, and then we're going to put another slot next to it vertically and another one together vertically, and they're all going to come together uh, into one matrix. And so when we ask the question here of C bind, get the help page for it. This is what we get. We're going to combine our objects by rows or columns. So this is actually going to be both C bind and R bind, which we'll get to in into a second. So we're going to talk about C bind first. So what is this? So we're going to column bind A1, then A2, then A1, and A2 again. And remember, a1 is this, and A2 is this, and we're going to treat these as sort of columns, and we're going to we're going to squish them together, and so that's what this does. So we're going to run this little bit of function here. We're going to create a new object here called A underscore mat one. That's what it's called. And if we look at it, mat one, you'll see that we have taken A1, which is one, two, five point three, six, two, and four. We've turned that into a column of numbers, and we put A2 right next to it. We've turned that into a column of numbers, and then A1, again, next to it, that into a column of numbers. So we have a matrix that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows, and 1, 2, 3, 4 columns. In fact, if we can ask, we can do a function called dim, or the dimension of A1, we would get I'm sorry, the dimension of A mat 1 is 6 rows, 4 columns. So when you ask for the dimension of something, it's always going to give you the dimensions of the rows, the number of rows first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 4 columns. So we can also do this with R bind. So we're going to treat each one as a row, A2, A1, A2, A1, and go ahead and run that. If we look at A mat 1, two, we get something different. We get something that, okay, here's A2 across as a row, right? So here's A2, A1, A2, A1, and you'll notice now we got one, two, three, four, five, six columns, six columns here. And so when you see the numbers show up on top, it's going to be bracket, comma, one bracket. Remember, that's this, this is that addressing system that we were talking about, except now we're going to be talking about it in terms of rows and columns, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. So that's one way to do it. Now, in the next part of the code here, we're going to use the function called matrix to build one. So before we, what we did here is we had um, some vectors that we created using the concatenate function and put them together. But now what we're going to do is something a little bit different. We're going to use the function matrix. So if we take a look at the help page for matrix, it's matrices. So 
this is a matrix. It creates a matrix from receiving get a uh, given set of values. In this case, the function is called matrix. We're gonna, it's gonna, the first argument is gonna be the data we're gonna put into the matrix, then the number of rows that we're gonna have, then the number of columns. So to read line 15 here, our mat one, uh, we're going to take a matrix of 1 to 20, which is a vector of 1, you know, just 1 to 20. We can copy and paste that and see it's 1 to 20. And we're going to put it uh, into a matrix with 5 rows and 4 columns. 5 rows and 4 columns. So we run that. And we get mat1. You see mat1 showing up in here. We'll look at mat1, and there it is. So... We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20, 40, 15. So here's our vector of 1 to 20 now put into a matrix of rows and columns. So we asked for a matrix with five rows. Here it is, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and four columns, 1, 2, 3, 4. So far, so good. And these brackets here, these this is that addressing system, again, I was talking to you about. So number seven is in the second row and second column. 13 is in the third row and the third column, and so on and so forth. We can also um, do a summary of the matrix, just like we had a summary of a vector before, and uh, it'll actually do it by column. What's the min and you know for each one of the columns here? This is column 1, 2, 3, 4, but we won't use this so much. So let's now go and make another matrix here. Um, this time we're going to do it, you know, from 20 to 1. So 20 to 1 now is going backwards, you know, 20, 19, 18, all the way down to 1, in five rows and four columns. So let's take a look at the matrix, mat2. Here we created mat2. If we look at mat2, it's going to look different, right? So here is 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, and we're doing one other thing too here is that we've added an argument which is called by row. We're going to fill it up by rows first. So we had 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, all the way down to 1. So that's our next matrix. Uh, matrix. matrix. We can ask for a number of the rows that we have of matrix 1, which is 5. Again, if we look at mat 1, yeah, there it is. We can look at the number of columns that matrix 1 has, which is 4, right? And our dimensions of matrix 1 is 5 by 4, as I showed you before. And our length of mat 1, which is going to be a little bit different, it's still 20, right? So it's still 20 elements long. It just happens to be arranged in a 5 by 4 matrix. So, again, when we look at mat 1, we talk about the addressing. I'm going to talk about it here a little bit. Uh, again, in row 25, mat 1, we're going to ask for the third row and the first column. So the third row, third row, first column, that's number 3. So we can actually call out certain parts of this matrix using this addressing system. Yeah, that's number 3. Or I can look at, I can look at specific groups of elements. So here, this is saying, mat1, I want rows 1 through 3, because remember, 1 colon 3 is a vector, 1, 2, 3. And I want columns 1 through 2, because if I do this one column, or 1 colon 2, I get two columns. And so when I ask for mat1, I'm going to ask for one uh, rows 1 through 3, so that's 1, 2, 3, and the first two columns. So I'm expecting to get this is going to return a part of this matrix. It should look something like 1, 6, 2, 7, 3, 8. And that's exactly what we get. We pulled out the first three columns and the first two, I'm sorry, the first three rows and the first two columns. Just like vectors, you can add and subtract matrices. So this is mat1 plus mat2. So that's just taking the first element. So again, if we look at mat, what mat1 is, and mat2, this is matrix2, uh, you'll see this is 20, and mat1 plus mat2. So this element here is the addition of mat1 in that position, and mat2 in that position, which turns out to be 21. So that's how that's done. And we can do 
all the same thing. Mat1 minus Mat2 divided by raised to the power, and we get all the correct answers. So we're doing a lot of math very quickly um, using these matrices. We can also add the same thing with the logical vectors. So Mat1 is less than Mat2, and you can see that that gives us a matrix of trues and falses, of where that's true and where that's false. Uh, and so all of these logical operators work with matrices. And then we can also do the same kind of thing. I want to take a sum of my whole matrix, and that will give me the adding of every little element. That's 210. Or what's the mean of it? And what's another really fun thing to do here is we can do something that's call sums. What are the column sums of, ma of MAT1? So if you look at MAT1, we can say, okay, here are the columns. What happens when if I just add all these columns up together? Well, call sums will do that for you. You'll run it, and we'll get four numbers. So 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, that's 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, right? That's, that, add that all together, that's 40, so on and so forth. You can do the same thing with row sums. We're going to get now five different numbers. So 1 plus 6 plus 11 plus 16 is 34. 2 plus 7 plus 12 plus 17 is 38, so on and so forth. And we can also take the means of the columns. So the means of the columns are 3, 8, 13, and 18, and also the means by the rows. So one of the things that's really interesting here with these, uh, with these matrices is we're going to be working with data that kinds of looks like this. So in this class, we're going to have one value here. Maybe it's going to be a measure of longitude, or a measure of latitude, or a measure of time, and then some value. Maybe it's mercury poisoning values, or maybe it's, uh, who knows what it is, maybe it's sea ice values, and we can add uh, column names, right, so column names mat1, this is a little bit different, so we're going to ask what the column names are for mat1, and right now there are no column names, that comes back as null, it's empty, because you look at the columns and there's no names up here, but here's a vector of text values that's four long that we're just calling long, lat, time, values. So this is just short for longitude, latitude. We might get something like this and we can name the matrix. So when we look at MAT1 again, we might see something that looks like this of long, lat, time, value. And these are just made up uh, values, but I just want to show you how now you can start thinking of pulling lots of data into R or building a matrix in R so we can start to talk about uh, different data types in this uh, in this class. So that, in a nutshell, is matrices. And what we're going to do next is a little tiny plotting tutorial.